In today's video, I wanted to go over on how to install an operating system on your Odroid if you did not go ahead and order one with your actual Odroid. Since I've got a ton of SD cards just lying around, I didn't bother ordering one of their operating systems and I knew you could download them. So I figured out what the hell, I'll just go ahead and install it myself. Well, once my Odroids got here and I tried to go ahead and put them on uh, my SD cards, there was quite a bit of actually jumping around trying to figure out exactly how to do it, or at least what tools or applications I was gonna need. And that's what this video is for. Now, the specific use that I have for my Odroid C2 is I wanna go ahead and turn it into a handheld computer. And think of it along the lines of something like a Game Boy, except I wanna be able to go ahead and put my own Unity apps on it. And it's gonna be running Android. That's the case I have for my Odroid C2. Whatever yours is, you know, that's fine. But for me, I want Android. So where do I go and get Android and how do I put it on? Well, I've come to the odroid.com, their wiki site. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this down below in the comments or rather in the description. But let's go ahead, we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm gonna be doing this on a Mac and they do have documentation here for if you're doing it on a window, Windows. I've went ahead and tried it out on Windows and it works just fine the way they said. You'll want 7-zip to unzip the, the XY file we're gonna get, or sorry, the, the XZ file we're gonna get. And then I've always used Win32 Disk Imager to burn the images, but there's a lot of other ones out there. I've never had a problem with Win32 Disk Imager, albeit it's not the prettiest, but Pick whatever one works for you. Now you'll probably want to keep that page open if you are on Windows, just so you can keep going back and refer to it. But I'm going to go ahead, jump straight into the Android builds. And right off the bat, you'll notice it's all 5.1 to you get down a bit. Then we have some marshmallow versions. Uh, if you're in Korea or maybe somewhere in Asia, this might be fast for you to go ahead and download from here. But I'm over on the other side of the world. So I'm going to come over to the US mirrors. They're quite a bit faster for me. So when you get here, you'll get the directory of all the different builds that they have available for you. Now, I absolutely hate this thing. I really wish they broke it up into sections because it's a pretty long list and I just don't like the way it's sorted. It hurts my head. <laughs> so anyway, the first thing you want to look for is the self-install versions. So not the dailies. Let's just keep going down. Here we go, self-install. Now we want the latest version, which is right now officially supported is six points. Uh, was it 01 or something like that? Yeah. Now I have seen other people running Nougat or seven point whatever on their Odroid as well. Now those are unofficial supported versions. And right now I just don't want to deal with that. I just want to go ahead and grab the latest version of the currently supported version and just install that. But if we come down and look at the first 6.01 self install, it's back from November. I don't want that. Keep going down to the last one here. And that was actually just a few days ago. So I'm going to grab this version here, the version 2.1, Master 35. At the time you're watching this video, there's probably a new one out there already. The main thing to make sure of is that it's the self-install. The latest version is 6 point whatever. When 7 comes out, I'm sure I'll try that too. But you want the XZ version. So go ahead, download that. And when that's downloaded, you're going to go ahead and, well, get this file here, your XZ file. On Windows, it tells you to go ahead and use 7-zip to, uh, to extract the image file from it. I've read a few places that you can actually just come in and erase the XZ off the end, the XZ period off the end. I've not had any success with that. So I've just been going ahead and extracting it. So on Windows, go ahead and use 7-zip. On Mac, I've been going ahead and using an archiver. It's free. It's off of the App Store, so I feel confident with it. Now all you gotta do is right click, open with, and just select the unarchiver. And it'll actually go ahead right away and start unarchiving. And you're gonna end up with your image file right here. Now again, quickly over to the documentation for the Windows part. They use Win32 Disk Imager, which is what I've used on Windows and never had a problem with it. On Mac, I use Apple Pie Baker. This is the exact same one I use for my Raspberry Pi installs. And it's super easy. Now, if you are reusing an SD card from something else, knows you've had this in another device, you're probably going to want to go ahead and select it and hit prep for noobs. And what this does is it goes ahead and reformats the whole thing under one partition and it's a FAT32 partition. This way here you can get rid of all of those hidden partitions that a regular format would not get rid of. And it's only going to take a few seconds to do, I guess, depending on the size of your card. This one here is a 32 gig and it only took a few seconds. Now, after that's done, you're going to want to go ahead and select the image file. Now I've got mine on my desktop. And then once you have an image file selected, your actual SD card that you want to go to, go ahead and just click restore backup. And it'll take a few minutes. Again, depending on the speed of your card, it could take a few minutes. It could take several minutes. 
Now, one side note is that you're going to be running this, you're going to be running your operating system off this SD card. Think of it as your hard drive. Spend a little bit more and get something that's fast, a class 10 or better. I've seen a few posts of some people with their class four cards, and they're talking about how slow and laggy everything feels. And that's because you're using a really slow SD card. Spend a little bit more and just get one that's a lot faster. Class 10 and above is what you should be aiming for. But anyway, once this is done, it's gonna go ahead and eject for you. And we can actually go ahead and put that in the droid. So let's go take a look at that now. Now, when you boot for the first time, it's gonna take a few minutes to actually go ahead and expand the partitions and install everything that needs to be installed. Remember, this was the self-installing version. But after it's done, you're gonna get this Android screen and it might stay here for a little bit as well, the first boot. But then after that, you're gonna be presented with your desktop. And voila, we've done it. Now, the first thing I recommend when you get this hooked up is to make sure it's hooked up to your ethernet. Go ahead, click the apps down at the bottom and take note that I've already installed the two Unity applications that I'm working on for Android, at least the ones I've been using for testing so far. But go ahead and run the Odroid utility. Now you may want to go ahead, I've not played around with any overclocking or whatnot. You may want to play around with some of these settings to try to get a little bit more out of it. If you've just got it and just started playing around with it, I'd probably wait before you start playing around with that. But one thing I wanted to play around with was the resolution. By default, I'm at 1080p at 60 hertz. Take note that you can actually go all the way up to 1080 or 4K. Now for my recording software, I'm going through the Elgato. I can't do 4K, it won't display, but 1080p is fine. Hitting escape twice will get you back to the desktop. So let's go ahead and take a look at the application that I ran last time on the Pi and we'll see how it runs in the Odroid. That was the 2D platformer one. And I've actually got to move the keyboard over here. And it runs much smoother. Okay, get up that way, that's fine. Let's go ahead, die, respawn. But yeah, it actually runs at an acceptable frame rate. I had this up to 4K, and even at 4K it ran fine, but to be honest, let's face it, like, there's not a whole lot, of, whole lot of graphics power needed for this game. Well, I think it ran reasonably okay on the Pi. It definitely runs better on the Odroid. And I'll be looking forward to running some more games here. I'm just going to use Alt-Tab to get back to my desktop. So that's all I wanted to go over in this video, is to go ahead and show you how to install an OS yourself on one of your own SD cards. And also to give that quick test, just so you could see a difference between the Raspberry Pi, what it was running at. And it was actually running under 1080p. I have to go back and check. But I think I had it running at 720p for the Raspberry Pi, and this one here was at 1080p. And I'm not sure how it's going to come across in the recording, but just looking at it on the screen, it was so much smoother. Now, later on down the road, if we ever get a proper GUI driver for the Raspberry Pi, it might actually become my, my first choice for what I'm going to be working on. As I really do love the size of the community for the Raspberry Pi, as well as the onboard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I can get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on here if I want to go ahead and you know use up two of my USB ports. Now, this does have IR built in, but I'm probably not going to need that for my little handheld set. Maybe if I turn it into uh, a desktop or rather a console that I want on my TV that I can use a, an IR remote to turn it on and off. That might be a fun project down the road. Anyway, let me know down below in the comments if you want to see a little bit more on the Odroid C2 or the Raspberry Pi 3 or really any other board that's out there and fairly easy to get your hands on right now. Again, let me know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.